John Adams met Thomas Jefferson in 1775 at the dawn of the American Revolution. Almost 40 years later, he tried to describe him in a letter. Jefferson was like the great rivers whose bottoms we cannot see and make no noise. It was hard to fathom Jefferson even after 40 years, or 240. Let's look at some highlights. One highlight is his words. This contraption is a writing machine he used to copy his letters. Listen to some of the words he wrote. The God who gave us life gave us liberty at the same time. The hand of force may destroy, but cannot disjoin them. Confidence is everywhere the parent of despotism. Free government is founded in jealousy and not in confidence. I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. This momentous question, like a firebell in the night, awakened and filled me with terror. I considered it at once as the knell of the Union. Clear, quick, and strong, Jefferson at his best is a great American writer, almost as good as Scott Fitzgerald. Let's watch him at work. In June 1776, the Continental Congress put Jefferson on a committee to write a Declaration of Independence. One of his models was the Virginia Declaration of Rights, which had just been written by his friend George Mason. Here is one of Mason's sentences. Here is what Jefferson did with it. That's tighter. He adds the creator and tightens the rest. He cuts property and tightens the rest. Congress gave one tweak. Mason's version was good. Jefferson's is great. As Mark Twain said, the difference between the right word and the almost right word is the difference between lightning and a lightning bug. Jefferson set great stock in the moral sense, which he thought every man had. State a moral case to a plowman and a professor, the former will decide it as well and often better than the latter. The innate sense of right and wrong was the most important way that all men were created equal. Jefferson's faith in it was essential to him as a political leader. He was a wealthy, well-educated aristocrat. The only business he ever ran was making and selling nails at Monticello. Yet Jefferson railed against rich bankers and led a party of small farmers and artisans. They trusted him because he trusted them. Jefferson didn't just think of his country as it was. He always thought of it growing westward. The parlor and gardens of Monticello, his house in the Blue Ridge Mountains, looked west. During his first term as president, Jefferson offered Napoleon Bonaparte $10 million for New Orleans and Florida. Napoleon made a stupendous counteroffer. The whole Louisiana Territory, over 828,000 square miles, for $15 million. Jefferson grabbed it. He sent Captain Lewis and Lieutenant Clark to explore the new domain and displayed Indian artifacts in Monticello. Not everyone was thrilled. Representative Fisher Ames said the otters would as soon obey our laws as the Frenchmen and Spaniards who then lived in New Orleans. Jefferson didn't care. He foresaw a West filled with Americans. It was the secular promised land. Hopefulness was perhaps Jefferson's main character trait. He looked for good news in politics and society. The French Revolution began in 1789, just as Jefferson was about to become America's first Secretary of State. Jefferson saw it as a liberation struggle. The liberty of the whole earth was depending on the issue of the contest, he wrote, and was ever such a prize won with so little innocent blood. 
The politics of 1790s America pitted Jefferson against the Federalist Party of Ames, Adams, and Alexander Hamilton. Jefferson never doubted that he would win. I shall sink Federalism into an abyss from which there shall be no resurrection. Jefferson credited Jesus with every human excellence, but he blamed the churches for corrupting his teachings with mysticism and subtleties. So he decided as president to edit the Gospels down to Jesus' actual words, which, he said, were as easily distinguishable as diamonds in a dunghill. And as an old man, he expected Unitarianism to become the general religion of the United States. Some of his hopes fell through. The French Revolution ended in Napoleon, who ended in defeat and exile. The Federalists disappeared, but other parties arose in their place. And Jefferson missed an evangelical revival and a wave of Catholic immigration in his own lifetime. But America is a democracy and has gone west. He hoped for everything but some of his hopes came true.